I got a question for you, the answer of which I think will blow your mind. It blew my mind. How much downward force, how much compressing downward force does your shock experience and your spring experience when you ride your motorcycle? I'll tell you right now, we all generate different forces. So let's just use me for an example. If I weigh 200 pounds and my bike weighs 400 pounds, so 600 pounds, right? You got two wheels, maybe it's 300 pounds a wheel. 300 pounds. Then you think maybe, well, sometimes accelerating really hard, you're just on the back wheel. Okay, so maybe 600 pounds goes in the rear. Then maybe you think, oh, what if you hit a bump while you're doing this? Maybe 700 pounds? I don't know, think about it. What's your guess? What's really, what's your guess? I have the answer and I'm gonna share it with you in a second. I'm Gogo for superduke.com. Let's get into this spring thing a little bit. Let me start this by saying that springs are a little bit screwy. It's very difficult to explain springs, all of the elements of springs between preload and, and why and sag and wear and, and one rider compared to another rider and what rate should I use? And there's so many pieces to this puzzle that it's very difficult. I've tried to make this video 12 times and failed every time. So what I'm going to do today is instead of trying to do this whole thing at once, I'm just going to do one element at a time. And right now, today's element is what the hell is a 110 newtons per millimeter spring? Like, what does that mean? Here's what that means. It means it takes 110 newtons to compress this spring one millimeter. Now, I have no fucking idea what a newton is. And a millimeter to me is like such a small amount. Like I'm not identifying with this. So, like I told you, I've been working on this for months and spending money. I built this contraption behind me so we can all understand what the hell this means, right? This is, uh, I think it's called a force gauge or something. I machine this, I machine this. So I'm gonna put these things together. Ugh, come on now. And we're gonna compress 110 newtons per millimeter spring and try to see if we can present this data in a more understandable way. Okay, so here is my 110 newtons per millimeter spring in this homemade apparatus. And you can see that we have zero force on the spring. It's, it's zeroed out. So as soon as I start compressing this, we're gonna know how much force is being put on. Let's first go to 10 millimeters, A, so I know it's not gonna explode on me, and B, because when I put my spring in my shock, I put it in with 10 millimeters of pre-installed preload. Now I have a preload adjuster on my own shock and you know, you probably do too. There's some way to adjust preload. So my ground zero is 10 millimeters of preload. And then I can go from there more. But let's just say, let's just go to 10 and see how much, when I hold my shock in my hand, how much force is already on that shock. It's not even in the bike yet. Ready? Eye right, protection. Zero. Here we go. Okay. I don't have a digital readout on this gauge, so um, I just have to look and line the lines up. And so it's not like to the thousandth of a millimeter accurate, but it's very close, right? So 10 millimeters, it's about 300 pounds of force or 138 kilograms. I don't understand. I don't like relate to kilograms as much. I grew up around pounds, so I know about how much 300 pounds is. It's more than I can lift. Um, but you might relate to kilograms. So 138 kilograms, just like I said, just carrying that shock around before it even goes in the bike, it's got that much force already on it. Now, as we already talked about, I know that I can press my shock and I'm um, 40 millimeters at Thunder Hill and Laguna Seca at race pace. So let's put 50 millimeters on this spring because remember, it's got, 10 millimeters of pre-installed preload. And then I take the suspension and I extend it like this and I zero out my 
potentiometers on the data acquisition. So um, 40 is really 50, because I don't consider that 10 of preload. So let's see if I can compress this to 50 without killing myself on this thing exploding, and let's see how much force there is. Then we'll know how much force, how much the peak force that I experience when I'm on the track. Holy shit. Don't make sounds like that. this like this for too long but it's 588 kilograms or 1296 pounds of force that it takes to compress a 110 newtons per millimeter spring 50 millimeters now if that doesn't blow your mind i don't know what will because i was guessing like I don't know, 800 maybe? And I've asked a few people in the past, and they also guess, you know, 700, 758. So it's intense how much force actually goes into your spring, right? What also is very interesting, let me take the pressure off this thing. So the interesting thing about this is if I generate 1,295, I saw 1,300 pounds of force when I ride my bike at race pace around these tracks and Gavin uses a 100 and he uses 40 millimeters so he's generating different force I wonder how much different force Gavin is generating than I am you want to figure it out I have a 100 spring let's put it in the jig okay here is Gavin's 100 newtons per millimeter spring Let's put the same 50 millimeters on it because he also uses 10 millimeters of preload. And uh, let's see what the difference is. We're zeroed out. I'm putting this eye protection on. Yeah, there you go. There we go. 50 millimeters in a 100 spring is 1,153 pounds. Or. Five hundred and twenty three kilograms. So I'm generating thirteen hundred pounds of force when I ride, and Gavin is generating one thousand one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty pounds more force I'm generating than Gavin. And we're the same weight. I can add one thing to this. I've tried. Gavin spring. I've actually, so I run a 110, like I said, I also have a 100, I have a 105, I have a 95. When I change from my 110 to a 105, I can't ride the bike. I, it feels like um, the bottom, the back, the bottom, it just feels like it, it falls to the floor. It, it feels like I, I can't keep the, the chassis attitude that I want, I lose it. The bike just collapsed. I, always, I use the word collapse often. A 100, forget about it, impossible. 105, I'm frustrated, get it out. One time I'll try it, get it out of the bike, back to a 110. So, you know, maybe I'm a little sensitive, right? But that just goes to show you, if Gavin uses a 110, he's like, oh my God, I've got no suspension. We're the same weight. So um, the point is, it is really, really important to me, to me, especially, particularly, super important, the spring rate that I use. But I'm the same weight as Gavin. Same age, same track, same bike. And it's really important to him too. And he's such a different number than I am. Here's another interesting spring point. I set my bike up to have 26 millimeters of sag in the rear. When I'm on the bike with leathers and helmet and everything, my bike sags 26 millimeters from fully topped out. So what is that at the shock? That's 13 millimeters at the shock. So want to know how much when I sit, remember I'm 200 pounds, my bike's 400 pounds, so that's 600 pounds. And you're dividing it 
300 is on the front wheel, 300 is on the rear wheel, right? Okay, so how much exactly is being experienced on the spring? Like how much force is on the spring when there's only 300 millimeters on the tire? This is interesting. So 10 millimeters of preload plus 13 millimeters of sag. Let's see how much. I'm gonna put 23 millimeters of Six hundred and fifteen pounds. When I'm just sitting on my bike, six hundred and fifty pounds, fifteen pounds of force are on my spring, or two hundred and seventy-nine kilograms. Just when I set my bike up with sag, and I'm not even rolling. Who would have thought? Okay, so that's one small piece in this puzzle of springs and suspending the motorcycle in space, in the space of your shocks travel and your forks travel. This is only one of the puzzle pieces that we need to understand to get your bike to work really great for you. Next, we're gonna get into some other funky things about springs, which will be equally like, what the hell? Well, I'm looking forward to it next week.